Hi everyone, it's Nicole. Welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be creating with some of the brand new November 2022 release products from Mama Elephant to create a love themed card with a distress splatter background. This is a super quick and easy way to create a background. We are going to start by using this awesome quilted cover creative plates background. I absolutely love it and I'm going to splatter it with some Kitsch Flamingo Distress Spray and this is Distress uh, not Distress Oxide and you can see I just kind of halfway depressed it to get the splatter and there's some bigger droplets some smaller ones I used a plastic box as my splatter box as always because it's so easy to rinse out and reuse over and over. I'm going to set that aside to dry and I have die cut the Mama Elephant Hearts of Flutter Creative Cuts background, another favorite from this release. There are a lot of really great basic pieces in this November release and I'm going to use Kitsch Flamingo and Lumberjack Plaid. Yes, that new color from Tim Holtz with uh, a fairly new color, Kitsch Flamingo, for my background and color up that heart background. Next, I am going to take images from the Love Cupid's stamp set, stamp them on some Bristol Smooth cardstock with Lawn Fawn Jellyfish ink. This is a fantastic ink for no line coloring. The line kind of basically disappears. It's it's long enough long enough. It's dark enough for you to be able to see while coloring, but once you add your marker to it, it really just kind of fades into the background, leaving you with that amazing no line look. I'm using Zig Clean Color Real Brush Markers. They are my favorite for no line coloring. Um, I haven't used the Zigs in a while, so it was really fun to get back to these and play around. As always, the colors I'm using are listed down in the description below the video here on YouTube and listed below the photo on my blog. You can click the link in the description box to visit my blog. As always with the Mama Elephant Stampede release, that is their blog hop and there are giveaways. So you definitely want to check out my blog post that coordinates with this and leave a comment on the stops along the hop for chances to win. And on Instagram for a chance to win. So definitely uh, check out my links down below. I'm using mid brown beige and a blender for my cute little kangaroo here. And I'm kind of playing around. I'm looking through my markers, trying to find what I'm looking for. I am out of practice with my zigs. Um, it took me a minute. I keep them in these clear trays. I keep mine horizontal and I am going to color in the hearts all in real traditional pinks and reds, of course, with my critters being nice neutrals and then um, the arrows being gray. I, I just love these images. They're really cute and fun. And as always, coordinate back to other Mama Elephant stamp sets. So if you have other stamp sets from Mama Elephant that feature feature these critters, you can mix and match, even if they are not love Valentine's themed. Um, I love that about Mama Elephant. I love that about Lawn Fawn. It's one of my favorite things that companies can do is to make critters and images that you can really mix and match to extend the life of the stamp sets we've invested in. For the little cute Cupid wing here on my kangaroo, I am going to color that in with aquamarine blue and shadow mauve. And you will notice anytime I am using pink or red in my images today, I am coloring those last uh, with the exception of the green leaves for my roses here on the kangaroo. I completely forgot. Uh, with pink, it's a little more forgiving than it is with red, but these are water-based markers, meaning if you touch the tip of a lighter color to the darker color, it will draw that color out into that area. So if I had colored the heart on the kangaroo first and then gone in with beige, which is pretty light and accidentally even barely touched it, it could bleed out into the rest of the design. That is pretty common with a lot of 
uh, Red's uh, water-based products, and so I do try to be a little careful with that. I've learned over time that it's just smart to color that last, so that doesn't happen. We're gonna move on to our Koala. This is gonna be platinum brown gray tint in a blender. And I am always a sucker for an image that has balloons. This is no exception. I love that the koala is floating with by these little balloons and he's holding an arrow in his hands. With the cupid that's holding the heart, I did choose to use one other small image from the stamp set, even though there's lots more critters, lots more images. Um, I'm just gonna use these three so that the background that we're creating or we've created is really going to shine. I'm using a little pink haze for the cheeks on the critters, insides of the ears, then kind of covering it or blending it, I should say, with gray tint. And I did go back and add a little extra color in a few places on the koala. When coloring with Ziggs, I am using Bristol Smooth cardstock. I have linked to that down below. It is my preferred cardstock for Zig Clean Color Real Brush Markers. I get asked that question quite a bit, and I wanna make sure that uh, I answer that here in the video. Sometimes I forget to mention it. I tried many different mark or many different papers when I started coloring with these markers, and I was really disappointed to the, to the point that I thought I was going to get rid of the markers. And someone suggested the Bristol Smooth and I have not looked back. It makes a world of difference. Um, so I highly, highly recommend it. For the balloons, I want three shades, but I don't necessarily wanna pick any additional markers. So the red is carmine and light carmine. The dark pink I'm coloring right now is peach pink and sugared almond pink. And then I'm going to do a light pink balloon, which will just be sugared almond pink and the blender. And it shows you how with five markers, um, and there's even more color combinations you could get here, you can really kind of get different shades and uh, variants of that color family just with the blender. The blender is invaluable in my opinion. I have gone through, this is probably my fourth or fifth blender, but I do love it, I use it every time I color. Another question I get asked a lot about Zig uh, Clean Color Real Brush Markers is if they're refillable, they are not. So you would have to buy a new marker when it runs out. I have bought a few new markers, but I have also had my markers for well over eight years or so, and only a few of them have I bought new ones, um, my most often used markers. So I find that it is a great investment. Now the faces on my critters do need some color. Oh, and I did feather in the uh, arrows, the feathers on the arrows so that it I didn't color it in solid, I guess I wanna say. I just took the tip of my marker and kind of feathered that instead, and I love the effect it gives. I am going to now take some wire snips, cut out the dies that I need from the Love Cupids set, and I'm going to temporarily tape those in place and run them through my die cutting machine. Now, I did not add detail to the face is what I started to say. That is because I will add that once my die cutting is done. I tend to like to do that because I like to use the black jelly roll pen and for, for like eyes and for the koala nose. And I find if you do that first and then run it through the die cutting machine, it kind of smashes it almost. Um, it's fine, it's not the end of the world, but I like to do it after. So once I have die cut everything, that is when I'm gonna take my detail pins and add anything in. So for the kangaroo, it's gonna be the eyes. For the koala, it's going to be the eyes, the nose, the mouth, and the balloon strings. Um, because we're using a no line coloring ink, you're not going to get the detail for the balloon strings that you would get like with a black ink. So I like to go in with a fine tip black marker I use the, the jelly marker for the eyes and the nose, but then for any of the fine detail, I just use a fine tip pen, and I even drew in some little balloon ties on the tops of the balloons, and we are ready to put it all together. Now, 
off camera and I forgot to turn my camera on, so you'll notice there's splatter all over the hearts. At least I don't think I had it on camera. Um, I am using the Hero Arts White Iridescent Shimmer Spray. That's what I use to get the distressing on the hearts. You could also just use water from a distress splayer to get that splatter look on the hearts, or you could leave them solid. I kind of went with more of the distressy type of look, and in real life there's some beautiful shimmer to that splatter. Next, I popped up my Hearts of Flutter background on the quilted cover with foam adhesive. I'm going to pop up my critters with foam adhesive. And I'm just going to kind of play around with that. I do need to grab some sentiment, so before I commit to too much more of my sentiment or of my uh, of adhering things sorry I am going to grab sentiments from that love cupids stamp set and I am going to choose three of the sentiments and I'm going to stamp them on a scrap of Simon Says Stamp slate gray cardstock I'm going to prep my cardstock first with a powder tool we'll stamp everything with clear embossing ink heat emboss with white embossing powder and then I'm going to die cut with sentiment labels dies. And I did stamp those a couple of times to make sure the impression was really good since I haven't stamped these before. And I want to make sure that I heat both the front and the back of the cardstock, hopefully, so that I get um, uh, as little warping as, as possible. And once I have that and the embossing powder has cooled, I'm going to take a dry cloth or you could take a paper towel or a Swiffer cloth and buff away any of that remaining powder so that our cardstock has that beautiful gray tint. I tend to like gray almost a little better than black for these sentiment strips. It gives you that feeling of of black cardstock but it's a little softer and I think it's beautiful for a Valentine's or love themed card like I'm doing here today. These are the sentiment labels dies from Simon Says Stamp. They are my absolute favorite and I am just going to pop those in place, run that through my die cutting machine, and then I will flip these strips around and run them back through again. That's going to give us perfect sentiment labels. You could take a paper trimmer and cut them. Um, these are my favorite sentiment labels dies. It's probably the most often used die in my stash. I keep them on a magnet right next to my die cutting machines. I don't even put them away in a a pocket or anything in a storage sleeve because I use them so very often. That way they are always at my fingertips. They are the only die set I do that with. Next, I'm gonna take some red line tape and I am going to place that on the back of my sentiment labels and I'm going to pop those in place right there on my card. I'm liking the placement. I think this is gonna be really cute. I love if I don't have a large sentiment on a card, I love doing multiple sentiment strips because I think it adds a ton of interest to a design. And then I like to stagger them for visual interest as well. So it kind of, it goes, it just follows the flow of the card design. If you haven't tried that, I highly recommend trying it with small little sentiment strips. It is impactful and really, really fun. Your background still shines, your cute little critters or other images that you're adding still shine, and it's just a, a fun way to add multiple greetings to a card. And I'm loving this quilted background. I could see using it for all kinds of things, and that goes for the Hearts of Flutter as well. I think that's going to be a very popular die from this release. I could see it used in many ways in lots and lots of different colors. Once I've popped up my images, and I do have to kind of cut up some of these foam adhesive squares from Simon Says Stamp and make them fit this little teeny tiny arrow, I am going to do my favorite part of card making. Um, well, that's all my favorite part, but it's the embellishments. <laughs> 
finishing the card in a way that really makes it pop. That happy heart day sentiment, to me, that little uh, stamped outline heart is the perfect spot to add a heart embellishment. Don't you guys agree? So that is the first thing we're going to do. And these are some crafty love hearts from Trinity Stamp. They're little clay hearts. And I often use like the longer skinnier hearts, which they there are some in here as well. But there's two different shapes. I'm going to just put them out here on my work surface so you can see them. And these little round chubby hearts are the ones I want to use because I feel like they match the heart in the sentiment and they match the heart balloons and the heart that the critter is holding. So I'm going to scatter those throughout my card. I'm also going to use the XOXO cra uh, clay shapes from Trinity Stamps and I'm going to embellish one of the hearts with that little XO. Oh my goodness you guys so so cute. I like the little pink there and I'm going to use a combination of pink white and red hearts to finish off my card design and I decided to just stick with the small shape. I want the Hearts of Flutter to still be the prominent design element in the background so I don't really want to cover it up with a bunch of heart embellishments and instead just kind of reinforce that look and feeling with the hearts I choose to use. So we'll add just a couple more here. I think that's probably going to be good. I think I did about five scattered, one on the sentiment and then the XOXO. And then we will pop this onto a white top fold card base and we are all finished. Thank you guys so much for joining me today for this Distress Splatter background card featuring Mama Elephant stamps and dies and Tim Holtz Distress Ink products. The supplies I used to create my card are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. I want to give a huge shout out and thank you to my amazing Patreon members. If you would like to become a member of Patreon, please click the link in the description below for more details. Here is another video featuring Mama Elephant products that you might be interested in. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel, click the like button, and don't forget to hit the notification bell to always be notified when I have a new card making or paper crafting video. Thank you guys so much for joining me today and we'll see you next time.